Hello again, good evening. My name is Sandra Sinama Fenu, and I'm here for business on this special day, Christmas edition of Business News with me. So it's Christmas, as you already know, so you have a lot to eat and drink, not forgetting that chicken thigh on your plate, which you perhaps prefer freshly slaughtered. Well, if you're not having that chicken this year, you may probably be contributing to low sales of bet. Joy Business's Karen Dodo brings us a story from the Malamata market, where she's been gauging the business there. So it's the festive season again, and what is the festive season without food? And when we're talking about food, we know that people prefer to have their meals with live chicken and even live goat. Well, today I'm here at the Malata Market. I want to really find out how sales are faring. You know, Ghanaians have been crying that the economic hardship is affecting them. So I want to see if it's really affecting their cuisines and their dishes. <coughs> In different sizes and colors, these fowls were locked in different cages in a corner of the market with prices ranging between 30 and 120 cities. Although I chanced upon some bird lovers, clearly they were just a small fraction of the hundreds of birds waiting to be bought. Hajia Fati, one of the fowl sellers I engaged, explained that for her, sales have been slower than expected. She was hoping to have sold 1,000 birds, but now she's still struggling to sell 200. I was hoping sales would have improved by now. Today is the 24th, and I'm still struggling to sell all these 200 birds. I don't know why things are this slow. By this time, from 20th to 24th, by this time, no man can create 1,000 birds, but they say, to 200 in I then decided to engage another fowl seller on the other side of the market. And contrary to my expectation, Aligri, beaming with smiles, told me that for him, market has been good. The, the market is yeah, good, good past last year. Mm. Uh, the sales was more, there is, the sales was more. But now I sell by uh, 30 something now. But, um, but a small number, like uh, six, going to six, I will sell by 40 core. So for you, the market is going, people are coming? Yes, people coming. So another important part of the whole poultry business is the slaughtering. Now, there is a slaughter shelter here at the market, and I want to also engage them and find out how the market is for them, because we know that some people buy in the market and bring it here to be killed, and then some also bring it from their homes to be killed here. So let me find out. So I can see that he is counting money. Business is going on for him, boss. The, the, the business today, how is it going? Uh, the business Business, we thank God. We are doing business. Today, we are doing business. Today, like this, how many beds have you um, worked on? Yes, it's plenty. We can we, it's on, on accountable. We could can't know how many beds we, we killed and then we said. But then at the end of the day, how many beds are you hoping that people will bring and you work on them? Uh, those people are bringing one, one, two, two, five, five. That's why I can't think of them. Clearly, the acclaimed economic hardship is not deterring chicken lovers from enjoying Christmas. Christy, with her hen in hand on her way home, told me that whether she feels a good economy in her pocket or not, live chicken will always be a must. It's Christmas and I want to do something different with my meals, so a live chicken must definitely happen for me. With chicken or no chicken, enjoy your Christmas and a Merry Christmas from me to you. Karen Dodo reporting for Joy Business. And Merry Christmas from me as well. Government says it will deal with local oil firms caught fronting for foreign counterparts. The warning is coming after 60 firms applied for a stake in the country's oil blocks. Deputy Energy Minister in charge of Petroleum, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam says they have instituted measures to prevent the firms um, from outsmarting the system. For local content regulations frown on fronting. So fronting is criminal, it's criminalized by our laws. We need to be able to enforce these regulations to ensure that we don't promote fronting. But there is the other side to it. People are so intelligent, they will find ways to flout the rules. And this is why this government has passed the General Petroleum Regulations, which made two significant provisions that should help all of us citizens of Ghana to fight fronting. Number one, 
we have created a petroleum register and the regulations have provided rules for managing the petroleum register. On this petroleum register are published all petroleum agreements, all authorizations, permits, licenses, they are all published. And so, if you want to know who are the owners of a petroleum uh, agreement or the contractors involved in a petroleum agreement, you can go to the petroleum register and see for yourself the content and the signatories on the government side, but also on the contractor side. The second one is the provision in this regulation, which now makes it mandatory for information on beneficial owners. To other stories, now Vice Chancellor of Kumasi Technical University, Professor Mike Agbesi, has lauded government's flagship One District, One Factory initiative. He said these factories, when fairly distributed across the country, will create employment opportunities for both students and teachers. Do he praise government for initiatives in strengthening technical and vocational training education? He says more needs to be done. I think for now, we are not received much support, but when I look at the current government and what they have planned to do, um, it is the starting point because a lot has happened in the past. We have been neglected uh, very much in terms of provision of equipment and uh, workshop. Professor Champon believes the establishment of factories will serve as consultant hub for lecturers and learning center for students. He is optimistic it will ultimately reduce graduate unemployment. Yes. We have a number of industries within our locality, within the region, and Nokumasi, uh, the region itself, and then to be a basic occupation agric. So for our technical university, we have to look at a way of helping our farmers establish uh, small-scale industries, give them the capacity to run those industries. So if we have industry uh, located within this uh, enclave and other areas, there it will finally help us to be able to give that exposure to our student and lecturer. Lecturer become consultant to those industries, while uh, as, we, as institution also can establish small-scale industry as training units to help our students. At the event, 22 staff were honored for their contributions towards the success chalked by the institution. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. So a lot has been happening in the world of business. We've seen the local scene, but we want to go international to know what's happening next. A partial U.S. government shutdown over budget spending could continue right up to the opening of the next Congress on 3rd January, a Trump aide has said. The shutdown began at midnight Friday after opposition Democrats resisted President Trump's demand for $5 billion for his Mexico border wall. The so-called Super Saturday before Christmas saw an incremental boost in shoppers, according to the latest data from retail expert Springboard. High street footfall rose by 1% on last year and was up 6.9% on the previous Saturday, figures show. However, overall footfall still declined by 0.7% on last year. It was a bit of a last-minute burst, but it's not good, Springboard's inside director told the BBC. South Africa's run gained early on Monday in low volume trade ahead of a shortened Christmas holiday week as political instability in the United States kept the dollar's recent surge. Stocks ended higher in trade, led by resource firms. All right, so that's it for business tonight. But before I go, I love my fufu with fresh chicken, uh, neatly slaughtered here in Ghana. I don't like frozen <laughs> chicken with live soup. I don't know what you enjoy. Um, what's your favorite delicacy here in Ghana? Me? Well, I like, well, I like chicken too. And I had the 
gentleman, the, the, the man who sells the chicken, mm. and you're asking how many have you been able to sell? And he's like, unaccountable. <laughs> Why are they thrown away? Well, yeah, but what's yeah. your favorite? I don't like frozen chicken at all because, um, I mean, sometimes we call it a cocoa funnel. It stays on the sea for so many months before coming so and it's So you actually go in. for the live ones? I love it and fresh. You have, you have it slotted? Fresh. Well, you have the, the time for that? Yes, fresh oh, wow. every day, any day, every weekend. And you like it in chicken light soup, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Mm. I like chicken stew with some nice potatoes you know how we fancies do it mm. but thank Unfor you <laughs> unfortunately i'm working on christmas though i didn't get to do it but definitely on new year's day i'm going to do that and i'll invite I'm coming you. by your house to do it all right so that's <laughs> all for business with me sandra and i'm going to do enjoy the rest of the bulletin and your christmas as well merry christmas